In North Houston, the Texas Department of Transportation is several steps into implementing its plan to expand Interstate 45. The plan calls for new lanes to be added on the 13-lane expressway that connects Houston's core to the northern suburbs and its international airport. Unsurprisingly, the North Freeway cuts through the old grid of northern neighborhoods primarily occupied by Hispanic and Black Houstonians. In Independence Heights, residents are seeing TxDOT's plan eliminate a cherished church. In North Line, a wider highway is bringing more noise and pollution to a neighborhood whose streets are barely walkable. Nearly 1,000 homes are set to be displaced by this project. The North Houston Highway Improvement Plan passed through an environmental study and several pseudo-public consultations before being placed on pause by the U.S. Department of Transportation. The Federal Highway Administration cites Title VI of the 1964 Civil Rights Act in its decision, stating that the TxDOT project is discriminatory in its plans and its process on the basis of race. While support coalitions between private industries, including oil and gas, are calling for public approval of the project, local leaders, including Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo, are raising awareness at the inequity and destruction to historic neighborhoods projects like these create. Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo and County Attorney Christian Menefee are already suing TxDOT, arguing the project would force primarily minority families out of their homes, schools, and negatively impact the environment. A social justice rubric was developed to evaluate projects like these on their capacity to promote urban social justice. The rubric judges transportation projects based on four criteria integral to socially progressive planning. These criteria are meaningful longevity, environmental justice and public health outcomes, mobility outcomes and impact, and inclusive public participation and engagement. From these categories, the group can demonstrate whether or not a project actively promotes these facets that are critical for ensuring justice or resolving injustice in city planning. This grading scale helps decision makers analyze and communicate to stakeholders both the faults and positives that a potential project can bring to their citizens. In the category of meaningful longevity, the project does not create a sustainable solution for mobility in the region. The simple expansion of lanes only introduces more traffic on the road. The local community's mobility needs will still need to be addressed, as they must now navigate around this larger obstruction with their existing transit, sidewalks, bike lanes, and local roads. In the category of environmental justice and public health outcomes, increased air and noise pollution arrive at the detriment of local residents. Green space is eaten away with a larger concrete footprint. Higher speeds, less accessibility, and fewer natural areas reduce the local community's public health outcomes. Places like supermarkets and local clinics become more difficult and even dangerous to reach by foot. The project actively promotes environmental injustice. In the category of mobility outcomes and impact, expanding lanes on the expressway sacrifices local traffic patterns for the larger footprint of the North Freeway. The overpasses, already dangerous to walk under, become more dangerous for pedestrians and cyclists. More traffic will spill onto local roads at higher speeds, creating dangerous conditions for locals. The project obstructs improved mobility outcomes for the community. Finally, in the category of inclusive public participation and engagement, the project manages to neither promote nor obstruct the level of engagement seen in this type of work. TDOT hosted select public meetings and sent out a SurveyMonkey link to call on the public to vote whether or not to keep the funding of the project. The wording created a lot of misunderstanding, leaving locals confused about the status of the project. TDOT did not ensure the inclusion of a representative population, did not empower or actively work with community members, and simply informed and lightly consulted people from across the region. Overall, the project does not promote a socially just city. In fact, according to the rubric, the project further creates more injustice in a place that has already been harmed by insidious city planning of the past. The Texas Department of Transportation is called upon to address the faults based on the scoring from this rubric. The needs of the impacted communities must be addressed. Not only should a project mitigate its negative impacts to the community, it should actively promote a more just environment for all affected citizens, especially those who are actively marginalized by discriminatory planning practices. Until TDOT can ensure that its work lays the ground for better mobility, health, and environmental justice outcomes, this project will open up more scars to these communities.